back? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you would have. You definitely would have. Remember when we tried to throw, uh, what was it Lambo? Like all that time to Jarvis? We'd have had a better plan for you. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, what's up? Coach, Coach is down. It's not that bad. The sun's going to come up tomorrow. The guy's in a better mood this week, obviously coming off a win and scoring some points. You know, I think we were in a better mood Saturday night. You know, I think everybody was in a pretty good mood. I think everybody was in a pretty good mood by Sunday. Sunday was really spirited around here. You know, it's back to work. You know, though Sunday night we had victory down there. Everybody enjoyed that. And then, uh, you know, players had, I guess, the rest of the night. But the coaches went back to work and, you know, then you move on. So, yeah, you, you, you don't have time to, to worry about that. So it's just – did we do good on that play? You're in a good mood. Didn't do good on that play. You're, you're kind of in a bad mood. So, you know, I'm in a bad mood a lot sometimes. With this, not when you're out of surround. Because y'all make me. Happy. I don't know if we believe it. What about that hat? Where did that happen to the Commanders? <laughs> giving up on them already? Well, like one game. You're that, that fan. You're that fan, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not wearing Broncos. <laughs> but, uh, with the the two quarterback deal, coach, obviously I know Coach Houston kind of makes the I guess the final call. But what's it like during the game when you are communicating? Hey, do we? Go to Flynn or Mason here, like just kind of walking through that process. Yeah, we're still in that two quarterback deal, which can be good. You know, I, I know that uh, Strive and Ardy fits crazy. I guess Blake will talk about that a little bit about, you know, they got a couple different quarterbacks. And I was thinking about that today. I was like, well, maybe that's not such a bad idea if it drives them that crazy. Uh, you know, me and Coach meet throughout the, the, the week. You know, we're, we're here about 94 hours a week, literally. Uh, and so we, we have a lot of time to talk. And then, uh, he texts me at home sometimes too. You know, we, we text back and forth like that, believe it or not. So we talk about, you know, what's the plan? What do we think's best? How would we do it? They're, they're different, you know. Last week we had talked a lot about Flynn starting, bringing Mason in, you know, if, if the situation or whatever. We actually put Mason in on the goal line to, to run a quarterback run there. Uh, the ball was really wet. The kids were really complaining. The coach was arguing with the referees about why we couldn't get a dry ball in. They had some kind of mechanical deal. I don't know what the deal was with that. Uh, we kind of went to Mason in the second half just because we thought, let's do some quarterback run. We had we had a lead. We weren't going to sit on the lead. But we just thought, okay, this would be a good time to do that. And then he played really well. He did a really nice job. And uh, so we thought we'll just give Alex a little bit more rest because he's been banged up a little bit. And then we've obviously got a great chance to get Jeter in the game, which that was, that's, that was a good moment to get him in. And he took us down and we, we didn't have things far because they kept turning it over. But uh, he did take us in there and score. So. But yeah, we just kind of talk about the flow of the game and when we, if this happens, what would we do? So it's, you know, it's not totally laid out. We haven't gotten it to where, okay, he's going the third series or anything like that. And people have done that before. Uh, it's just really more about this is how we're going to start. And if we start getting this, we may go do this. And then he just, I just say, Coach, how about this? And he, he, he okays it or he vetoes it. <laughs> I know you talked about wanting, a couple weeks ago, wanting to kind of thin out that running back rotation. Yeah. But with all these guys scoring and performing well, I mean, I, I don't know how you kind of read that, but I mean. You know, it, the weird thing that happened is, uh, you know, yeah, we're trying to get it down to where, you know, I wanted Roger to get more carries, I want Javis to get more touches, more carries like that. And so uh, Marlon actually kind of tweaked his hamstring a little bit on Thursday. And so uh, Camaro probably wouldn't have got that opportunity. That You're talking about next guy up, why you better be ready. You know, we showed the team this thing today of Tom Brady talking about his rookie year. And y'all probably saw that that was out th today. It was an unbelievable deal. And that was Camaro Edmonds right there last week. You know, okay, you better just make your reps count. And then all of a sudden Marlon couldn't go. And you know, we had a lead. And uh, it's a good time to get another guy in there because, you you know, not that we're taking it like it's over, but you, you have a little bit of a, okay, we could play somebody. You know, one play won't lose the game or whatever here. Now, the thing about Camaro is, is that if he gets the ball, he's going to go score. I, I'm telling you, in practice, he does it all the time too. And so we are looking at each other like, well, maybe we do need to give him the ball more. And, the, and that's not uncommon. That's happened everywhere. I've ever been, and everybody's got that story on some team where some guy wasn't getting much, and then all of a sudden got his chance, and everybody's like, okay, now now we see, you know, what we need to see. So, 
the team was fired up for him. That's the good thing about that. The kids pull for each other. You know, Raji's the most unselfish good player running back I've ever been around, you know, saying so he, he's out there leading them, pulling for the team, so it's good. But Marlon's back this week, so we're the only one's out is Gerald Green, who got hurt in the game. He would have gotten maybe those carries, and he sli he slipped out there and hurt his ankle or his foot or something a little bit. So he may be out a week or two. How's Alex Swain doing health-wise? Is he he's, he's the healthiest he's been since he got banged up today. Today, you got to know Alex. Alex is not ever very high or very low. He, he you know, me and him, we we're opposites a little bit. I'm personality A. He's about C, I think, or something. If there is such a deal, he's never real high. Today, I could tell he felt better for the first time. He actually said, "Yeah, I'm really starting to feel good." So some of that treatment's working a little bit there, and I'm, you know, not getting hit as much last week. Obviously, probably helped that a little bit. Yeah. Trying to trying to get him to slide a little bit more. Well, I, you know, and he is a baseball player. Yeah. I would think he would know how to do that, you know. But the thing with the slide now is they mark it as soon as you put, I mean, you do, that head tilts back, boom. So it is kind of hard to slide and get any yards, you know. So they all like to be aggressive. They, they are tough kids, you know, that's for sure. They do that. And I don't know if, if you slide to it, they still hit you, it looks like, out there anyhow. So. Mason, I was getting it out quick, and, and he had that touchdown as well. Have you noticed maybe a little more confident Mason Garcia here? I, I feel like Mason has relaxed a little bit. You know, he, his desire to do well and maybe the pressure can get really, really, you know, hard. Uh, I, I think, you know, last week we walked off the field Thursday and I was, you know, talking with him about, you know, how you have to prepare as a backup versus a starter. You know, but it's different than the backup he was before because this backup is you're going in the game. You know, last year he was backing up Holton, but only if Holton didn't get up was he probably going on and when the game was still on the line. Now, you know, we're talking about the difference and how you got to prepare. And, and, and he was saying, yeah, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I really am. I'm starting to understand that and how you prepare and how you warm up and then you don't play for a while, you know, and have to try to find that rhythm with it. I was like, you just got to be ready. I don't know when it's going to be, but you will be in the game, and you know your game plan, and it's a little different, you know, what we were doing. And uh, he went in, he played well, and after the game, God, he was in the best place, and that was another great feeling that he felt good about himself, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, obviously it's been tough. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a hard business, you know. Fame's not all it's cut, cut out to be now, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's really not all it's cut out to be. I think he might have learned that a little bit. You know what I'm saying? It comes with a price. Almost even as far as pass yards and run yards on Saturday. Is that a 50-50 mix you're kind of looking for as far as game plan or want to lean one way or another? You know, I still wanted – you'd like to have more yards. I was a little shocked, but then I, then I blamed Blake for that a little bit. The, the other team kept turning over, giving us a short short field. No, we, we enjoyed that. Trust me, I, don't, I didn't get bad about that. Uh, I don't know. I, we, we would like to be just able to be able to run it and throw it equally well. I don't know that I care about how the stats come out. I just want to be able to do either one, you know, equally well so that if the team takes away the run game, you can throw the ball. If they take away the throw game, you can run the ball. So uh, people are really, you know, nobody wants you to run the ball. Everybody wants to stop you from running the ball. In a game like that, you know, it was wet, conditions, you know, the wind was swirling a little bit. You know, you would think, okay, we're going to really have to run the ball, but really probably throwing the ball is what got it going, you know what I'm saying, for us. We dropped a pass on the second play, but that could have gotten us going a little bit earlier. Uh, you know, Mason was in to run a little bit because of the conditions being bad like that. But uh, So, I, 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 good question, but I, I don't know that I checked the stats that much. I know everybody, you know, wants to just throw it every snap, I guess, and I'm, I'm, I don't have a problem with that. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do to win the game. Rice, they've given up some plays, but they got a pretty experienced, good defensive front. Yeah. What do you see from them? I'll tell well, you. what you see out of Rice's defense is it's very complex. It's one of those ones that, boy, Sunday, when you put it on, you're like, oh, gosh, all right, stop it. All right, what number is that? Okay, they, they play guys in multiple positions, so they move around, so it's a little difficult. It's an NFL-type system defense. Uh, the guy that's calling it's been in the NFL for seven or eight years, so you can see the NFL influence in it. So it's very multiple. It's a lot of movements, a lot of different stuff. 
And what you see is they make a lot of good defensive plays. Man, they just stop them, stop them. Their weakness has been they have given up some big plays. You know, Carter Webb had given up five explosive runs, runs of 12 yards or more in the first uh, three games or whatever, I guess. And, 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 and that's not that many. And I think we had seven or eight. So, you know, we were pleased to be able to get that. Rice has given up more explosive plays. And now they got more tackles for a loss and stuff like that. So it's it, – they kind of make you play an ugly game in that, you know, I, offensively, we'd love to just be high efficient, you know, make a lot of just yards all the time, keep the ball, have good drives, end up in scores, you know, not have many bad plays. Well, they force you into some bad, bad plays, and you got to just keep, sometimes you got to just keep running it or throwing it that same play because a big play will come eventually off of that. That's, that's what people have done. Offensively, they run the clock down to five seconds. So they're going to milk the thing, not let you get the ball back, you know. So you're going to have to also make your possessions count. The and they're throwing it a lot. So you think like, wow, okay, playing another team's going to throw good. We're going to open this thing up. It's going to be a lot of possessions, be a high scoring game. But they don't play. It's not really like that. They they let the clock run down, uh, so you don't get that many possessions. And you know when they're playing well, I guess they're still scoring a lot of points. So you still got to match that. I think you and Coach Shank are the only ones that have the experience of going into Rice and kind of just experiencing the lack of an atmosphere they have. How have you kind of prepared the guys for that this week? With that? Hi, Joe. Is that a nice way of saying that I'm old? Because I hear that's going around. Uh, and, I, and they may be right about that. I don't know if I'd argue with them on that. Uh, yeah, I've been to Rice twice. That rhymed it. Uh, and neither one of them were good. Now, I understand no trip from East Carolina has ever been good down, down to, to Rice. And uh, it is one of those old Conference USA type atmosphere games, as we say, where, you know, there were those schools that it was, you know, bring your own family and friends, you know, like that, because uh, there's not the crowd. And, and we've played, what, four games? How many we played? Four? Four games, we played in front of 100,000. <laughs> A pretty good home crowd here, I think. Okay, Appalachian record-setting forty thousand, you know, type atmosphere there. And then again, even with the rain, I, I guess the crowd was pretty decent. They said the atmosphere was good it, it, from the press box. That's where you really don't have much of a feel for that. So we have talked to the team a lot about going down there, and you know, guys that are not in the game are really important. Okay, they're always important, but they're even more important to kind of keep some juice going like that, and you know. Coach even mentioned the the COVID year, you know, like, okay, it could be a little bit. Now, I don't think it'll be quite to that extent, but it is a big, huge stadium, had a Super Bowl, had Blue Bonnet Bowls, all those stuff like that. So they they are a very, very small school. So you won't, they won't be a great student section there. You know, so we, we'll have to handle that. I, I would hope we would, we would be okay with that. So. Anything else? All right, guys, y'all have a good week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.